Welcome back class, I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide, and so last time we left off on number 6 of section number 5, so we're going to start right from there, which says, if x is not equal to 0 and x is inversely proportional to y, which of the following is directly proportional to x squared? Uh, sorry, not x squared, 1 over x squared, which is exactly what I wrote down here, so x is not equal to 0, check. x is uh, inversely proportional to y, check. So what is 1 over x squared equal to? We got that. So if x is inversely proportional to y, actually, no, I, that wasn't 1 over x squared is equal to, right? No, okay. So which of the following is directly proportional to 1 over x squared? So anyways, if x is inversely proportional to k over y, then y is directly proportional to 1 over x. Now, if we square x to be x squared, we would also have to square y, so it'll be just y squared. y squared is directly proportional to 1 over x squared, so that is choice E. Now we'll go to the next problem, number 7. It is... okay. So, point A is a vertex of an 8-sided polygon. The polygon has eight sides of equal length and eight angles of equal measure. When all possible diagonals are drawn from point A in the polygon, how many triangles are formed? So they're talking about a regular um, octagon here because it said it has eight equal sides and eight equal angles. So I'm going to attempt to draw a mediocre octagon here. I've never been good drawing shapes. I've been good solving shapes. That's something different. That's for another story. Uh, so I think I got at least the basics in. Of course, mine's not going to be equal. It's never equal, is it? But um, let's call this one, this bigger one, point A. So it says, when it tells us to draw all possible diagonals from point A in the polygon. So if point A is already connected to two points, this point and this point, so we really can't draw those again. Plus, point A is on point A itself, so you can't draw to draw point A to point A. So let's draw one line to this point, 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 and one line to this point. So then it asks, how many triangles are formed due to this? Well, there's one triangle, two triangle, three triangle, four triangle, five triangle, six triangles formed when you do that. So that's choice C. And now we'll move on to number eight. And I will make, I might make, just end it right here because number eight is, well, the final one here before we move on to user, no, uh, not user generated, self -respect. Uh, the ones where you fill it in. So, okay, x minus 8 times x minus k is equal to x squared minus 5kx plus m. Ooh, so this is, a, this looks like it's pretty, pretty tricky. So, now it asks, in the equation above, k and m are constants. If the equation is true for all values of x, what is the value of m? So, for starters, let's um, let's foil out this left side of the equation. You know, first, outer, inner, last. So, x times x is x squared, then minus kx, minus 8x, um, minus 8 times minus k is plus 8k which is equal to x squared minus 5kx plus m. So now, since we have x squared on both sides, we can cancel those out. And now our equation is going to look like negative kx. Actually, let's start with negative 8x because it looks kind of nicer. That doesn't really matter, though. Minus kx plus 8k is equal to minus 5kx plus m. So now, 
what we need to realize is that they said that this equation is true for all values of x but k and m are constants but let's focus on that it's true for all values of x that means the terms on the left hand side which have an x in them should be equal to the terms on the right hand side with an x in them because m and k are constants those never change and equally since those since uh minus 8x and minus kx according to this logic is equal to minus 5kx we know therefore that 8k is also equal to m therefore let's first solve the first one so minus 8x minus kx is equal to minus 5kx so this is the reason why this problem is the hardest one in this section it's because you kinda get confused on what to do but if you like realize what the question is really asking and you delve into it a little bit deeper then you'll realize what to do because it says that it's true for any value of x so all the terms with values of x must be equal at least like respectively on left hand side and right hand side so since every single term here has uh, has an x we could cancel out the x divide both sides by x so we will get minus 8 minus k is equal to minus 5k and therefore minus 8 is equal to 4k and k is equal to minus 2 and I hope I'm doing that right so maybe I'm not I feel like I did something wrong there uh, oh yeah 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 okay so I, it's just a little mistake. Uh, minus 5k plus k should be minus 4k. So we can cancel out both the negative signs. So 4k must be equal to 8. And k must be equal to 8 divided by 4, which is 2. So now let's go back to the other equation that we would have had to form. That 8k is equal to m. Well, we know what k is. k is equal to 2. So 8 times 2 is equal to m. Therefore, 16 is equal to m. And the question was, what is the value of m? So that is choice b. So a very tough, oh, that's a very horrible circle. Um, a very tough problem it was, honestly. It's not an easy problem at all. So don't feel bad about it at all if you didn't get it the first time. Uh, so... I think I should move on to the next problem. Should I really do that? Uh, yeah, sure, let's do that. So, even though th these are now uh, user response, uh, I keep on saying user response, student response, uh, test taker response questions, I don't know. But uh, number nine is, flying at a constant speed, a bird traveled 62 miles in four hours. At this rate, how many miles did the bird travel in three hours? Well, if it tra in four hours, it traveled 62 miles. Therefore, in one hour, it would have traveled 62 divided by four miles. So that would be equal to um, 60 divided by four is 15. Two divided by four is a half. So 15.5. Yeah. Okay, so 1 hour is equal to 15.5. Therefore, 3 hours will be equal to 15.5 miles times 3. That is equal to uh, 153045 plus 0 0.5 times 3, which is 1.5. So 46.5, and that is the correct answer. If it... Um, if it traveled at this constant speed for three hours, it would travel 46.5 miles. So, now we'll go to number 10. Okay, I, I really like this red color, especially at around this time of the month or year. year. So, points Q, R, S, and T lie on a circle with center P. If the radius of the circle is 1, what is the value of PQ plus PR plus PS plus PT? So, let's draw this circle with center P. Oh, no. <laughs> Not what I wanted. There we go. That is circle with center P. 
center is right there, P. So let's pick the points. Let's say Q is over here. Let's say R is over here. S is over here. And T is over here. Okay, so we need to find what PQ is, what PR is, what PS is, and what PT is. And now, it said the radius is equal to 1. Well, all of these seg line segments are radiuses because P is the center. And all these points lie on the circle. Which, when it says on the circle, it quite simply means on the perimeter or circumference of the circle. So, we know that this is equal to 1, this is equal to 1, this is equal to 1, and this is also equal to 1. Therefore, the value of all of these added together is 4, which is the correct answer. Now we'll go to number 11, which is where I will end off now today's episode. I will start again tomorrow. So, if 10 to the power of a times b is equal to 10,000, where a and b are positive integers, what is one possible value of a? Okay, so they say that 10 to the power of a times b is equal to 10,000. And a and b are positive integers. Positive integers. So, we need to find one possible value of a. So, let's see. When um, It could, let's make a table here, actually. There we go. So, if a is equal to 1, in order for 10 to equal 10,000 10, by raising just powers, it would be times 2 times 3 to, uh, to the power of 4. 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is 1,000 times 10 is 10,000. So, a value of a can be 1. How about 2? Well, a can, when a is 2, then b also has to be 2 because we would have to raise 10 to the 4th power to get 10,000. And um, will 3 work? Well, 3 isn't going to work because they said that a and b are both positive integers. If that rule wasn't there, we could have still worked something out because uh, we could have done, uh, let's, let's see, we could have done 4 over 3. 4 over 3 would have worked. 12 divided by 3 is 4. However, since both of them have to be integers, that doesn't work. But how about 4? Well, we know that 4 is going to work from this example over here. We just switch the numbers over. So your answers can be 1, 2, or 4. Whichever one you want, it is up to you. And I hope that helped you with your SAT preparation. And I hope you understood what I have been explaining this this time during the lesson. Um, It's pretty late at around my time so that's why I'm wondering so I hope you guys have again understood <laughs> I'm tr I'm tripping up but hope this helped you with your math preparation and your SAT preparation and I will see you in the next video soon